What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Home Slice. Coming at you again from my parents' house in Washington, and I've just really returned to the original ethos of the channel with these videos. <laughs> I'm shooting with my phone, and I'm like, this is my tripod here. It's like on my dad's speaker. I've got my kid's like popper toy. I'm sitting the phone against my cup of kombucha, homemade kombucha. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that today. I just thought you might enjoy seeing behind the scenes of my actual life here. So I just wanted to shoot a quick video. I don't think it will even be that long. And I'll do lots of illustrating things with my hands, which is super silly. But again, we're back to the original ethos of the channel because I just don't have ways to shoot very fancy videos while I'm here in Washington State. And I'm down with that. So hopefully you're okay with that. We're gonna to tackle today the question of why does dual grit sharpening work or perhaps what does it do? Now, originally, I had thought that you have big scoops, big scoops of like 250 grit size or whatever your coarse stone is getting taken out of one side of the edge and they're coming up against these little scoops of like 6,000 grit and so you have this, this meeting of large kind of teeth or serrations, that was the way that I was taught, that edges and sharpening worked, coming up against a much smoother surface to create this sort of micro serrated edge. <clears throat> Is that true? Is a dual grit edge actually micro serrated? Well, as it turns out, as with a lot of things, the, the reality of things is a lot more interesting than what I thought about it. Now, I sent several blades that I had sharpened to Todd Simpson, who runs the website, The Science of Sharp. He graciously offered to kind of collaborate and research why dual grit sharpening seems to extend the edge life of knives after Pete's first two tests. Pete, as Cedric and Ada did his first couple tests and then Todd and I did this. <clears throat> and what he found when he looked at it with the scanning electron microscope, I'm so sorry, I'm not gonna be able to put the actual images up, but I'll put the article, you can read the article yourself. I will put it first thing in the description of this video. If you haven't read it, it's awesome, it's really cool. And what he found is that the 250 grit diamond stone or whatever your coarse stone is, it takes the, the steel at the edge and it makes a very, very large burr. Now, you, as you go finer and finer with your other stones, that large burr, if you go all edge trailing strokes, which is what I was doing, it cleans up a little bit of that moved and damaged metal, but it leaves a little bit of it and pushes it back to center. So what you end up with is rather than an apex that is very straight, you end up with an apex that has a little protrusion that's at a much thinner edge angle, actually, at the very tip. Now there's a couple dangers with this, and I'll talk about that mainly in the next video, like what are the limitations of a dual grit edge and what are you giving up? Because you actually, as it turns out, you are giving up some stuff in order to gain what you're gaining. But the effect that that has is the knife cuts as if it was a knife that was sharpened at a lower edge angle because the first thing hitting that rope is, in fact, at a lower edge angle. The other thing that it does is if it stays in place, which it's often strong enough that it stays in place for normal use, like not high, high impact, but normal use, it will often stay in place. And as you wear through the steel, the, the, the way that it thickens, it actually thickens a little bit and then the edge freezes thickness while you wear through this part. And so there's actually a slowing down of the abrasion process or the apex or edge thickening process. And that is responsible for a lot of the extended edge life that you see. The other thing that happens is that 250 grit stone, it leaves an uneven surface. Now it's not these like perfect circular cutouts. It's not even consistent. It's mostly due to edge chipping. And then you sort of refine those chipped out areas with the finer stone. But the point of it being, it's not necessarily cutting teeth. And if you look at the pictures in the article, you'll see why I say that. It's, it's, it's very inconsistent. There's not a big cutout like very often, but there is just enough texture and irregularity to the edge that it will actually catch fibers of a rope or a piece of cardboard and initiate a cut 
much more easily than a perfectly smooth, clean, cleaned up edge. So this is sort of the basic functionality of a dual grit edge. There is a slight possibility, and I'm not claiming this, I've just had discussions with people who know a lot more than I do about physics and metallurgy. There is a possibility that the dual grit technique, because the edge and what you're cutting with is metal that has been moved and potentially like undergone some elastic deformation, as you'd say, it may be slightly worked har work hardened. And so that little razor edge that sticks up on top of your normal apex may actually be at a higher Rockwell value than the entire rest of the knife. That would seem to concur with the idea that a, a magna cut dual grit sharpened edge just outcut steels, which were much harder. It would seem to concur with the research that Keats doing, but I have, I don't know, there's probably a lot more actual research that would need to go into it before we would know if that was something that's happening for certain. So people ask me these questions, okay? Is it micro serrated? No, not exactly. It doesn't have deep cuts and it, the, the aggression doesn't last forever. A lot, a lot, lot, lot of the performance is due to how thin that extra protrusion or that extra extension of your edge is. It's so thin, it mimics a thinner edge. But once you wear down to the normal edge, you've got a very durable edge. The, the knives I sent to Pete were at 17 degrees per side. So he sharpened Magna Cut down to 12 or 13 degrees and his Gary Creeley uh, Mako knife and got it to cut 925 times. But you've sacrificed a lot of edge durability to get that 925. The cool thing about a dual grit edge is that it, it cut over 50% more than that. And even if the pr protruding edge was to break off, you've got a much more durable 17 degree edge under it that cuts as if it's actually a more acute angled edge. It's really a cool thing. I think it's really cool. And I'm putting more research into it right now. Now, people ask me often, is, isn't that just the same as a micro bevel? Like, you've got a different angle at the apex than what you have on the rest of the edge. And to answer that, it's actually the opposite effect of a micro bevel. Now a micro bevel happens when you have an edge angle that's one angle, and then you do a few strokes sharpening at a higher angle, and so you've got something going on like this. What you're doing with a micro bevel is you're giving up a little bit of slicing efficiency for a little bit more edge durability. And I think that that's a fairly wise thing to do, especially if you're doing like outdoors tasks or sharpening up your survival knife or your camp knife where you just want that edge to not sustain damage under hard use. A dual grit edge is actually the complete opposite of that. You're actually putting a, a piece that's at the tip of the knife that's a little bit more fragile than the rest of it. And you're, you're doing that because it boosts your slicing efficiency and your wear resistance, okay? So it's the opposite. It's a little bit more fragile, especially than a micro beveled edge. It's a little bit more fragile, to be honest, than just a V edge, but you get this significant boost in your everyday cutting performance by trading off a little bit of durability and kind of harnessing this strange phenomenon where you place like a, an aggressive, coarse, smooth razor edge on top of your edge that may possibly be a little bit work hardened or precipitation hardened. Anyway, that's all I'll say about it today. That's clearing up some of the major things. If you have other questions, please drop them to me in the comments. I'll either make a new video or I'll type you out a response as soon as I have time. If you want to check out what this Magna Cut Edge did in my testing, where I cut up a dirty old ship rope that had been in the ocean and how it did with that compared to other steels, check out this video here. I'll try to put a link up there. For the rest of you, I hope you have a great day and I'll say peace out from the home slides. Take care, guys. Bye.